Hello, I'm Dr. Ryan Stanton, a board certified and real self verified plastic surgeon practicing in Los Angeles, California. And I would like to explain to you who is an ideal candidate for buttock implants. We'll be looking at videos of real women who are interested in having buttock implants. I'll share with you what you need to know if you're interested in having this procedure. So let's get started. Hi, I'm Lexis Elise. I'm 28 and I recently lost 50 pounds. And right now I'm kind of looking to get the butt I used to have <laughs> before I lost the weight. Now it's a little long and grandma and square. A little extra cellulite -y. Am I a good candidate for a butt implant? So indeed, Lexi would be a good candidate for a buttock implant. She mentioned she wants to have a shelf back. She wants the butt profile to be rounded out again. It's kind of got deflated and flattened. Uh, again, the buttock implant is perfect for that. It gives a shelf up top, it rounds out the center part, and it harmonizes you know, at the lower pole going into the, into the back of the thighs as well. Shape of the implant is crucial. If you look at any anatomy chart, you'll see that the gluteus maximus and the gluteus medius make up an oval shape. So this implant is my own patented design. Uh, this is called the Stanton Anatomic Gluteal Implant. And I created this design implant after being in practice for approximately 13 or 14 years. And that's because this implant is the proper anatomic shape of the gluteus muscles that we're putting the implant into. The ideal and frankly the proper place to put buttock implants is only within the intramuscular tissue plane. What does that mean? That means the gluteus maximus and the gluteus medius two muscles make up the bulk of the muscle in, in the backside. And implants should only be placed within or sandwiched within those muscle fibers. Traditionally, the round implant has been the most common buttock implant used. These two implants are the same volume, same projection, but the volume distribution is a little different. So when you have two implants in there, and this one's sitting up here, and this one's sitting like that, you can see this implant will go the entire length of the muscle, this one here will be foreshortened, and from here down, you'll be missing projection. So when the patient stands to the side, and especially if they bend over, this one pops out like a gumdrop effect, and you see where it's augmenting the upper two-thirds or three-quarters of the butt, and it doesn't look natural, and it really bothers patients. If you're a patient that has excess skin, loose skin, sagging skin, whether it's from the aging process, uh, massive weight loss, uh, you've had other procedures done, and your butt is now deflated, uh, or just bad luck. Uh, the, the typical series of operations that I perform would be first to put an implant in and restore volume to the buttock. And then once we've restored the amount of volume and, and projection that a patient wants, then we go back and do what's called a lower buttock tuck. So additionally, Lexi uh, complains of cellulite to her buttock now that she's lost some weight. By adding volume to the buttock, it tends to improve the cellulite and dimpling appearance anywhere from 30 to 80% on patients. Now let's watch a video by a patient named Erica. Hi, my name is Erica and I am 40 years old. I have a relatively slim build and I did have breast enhancement surgery to start the curvy process uh, to achieve the body that I would love to have. I have spent several years in the gym trying to build up my butt on my own and have not achieved the results that I want. I just wanna know if I'm a good candidate for a butt implant. So Erica would be the traditional home run candidate for buttock implants. She's lean. She's working hard in the gym, trying to build up her butt, uh, not having any success. And this is, just, this is just a genetic thing. She could work out until she's blue in her face and year after year, and she'll probably get better muscle tone, and she, probably her thighs will get more muscular and bigger, but the butt is not gonna grow. So in this case, uh, her only option for a permanent augmentation of any significance is a buttock implant. This is in stark contrast to some other procedures for the buttock enhancement, most, most popular, Brazilian butt lift, where anybody that has a BMI under 24 or 25 simply just does not have enough fat for the procedure. I give a special warning in this case to patients that are asked or told to just gain some weight magically and come back and have a Brazilian butt lift, because often what you're not told is, unless you stay that 20, 30 pounds overweight, that fat's not gonna stay. So if you can imagine, you gain weight, 
20 pounds and then do liposuction to remove that fat and they stick it in your butt, what happens when you lose 20 pounds again? Well, that hungry fat in your body is sitting in your butt and when you lose the weight, guess what fat melts away first and the fastest? It's the stuff that's in your butt. It's also not exorbitantly expensive compared to things like fillers. So sculpture in particular has become a very popular way of augmenting the buttock and the hips. If we were to say 200 cc's in each side, that'd be a total of 400 cc's of sculpture. If you're paying for 400 cc's of active ingredient sculpture, that's gonna cost you at least 300, $400,000. So when a patient goes and pays five, 10, 15, 20, even $50,000 for sculpture, they're getting literally one, two, maybe three tablespoons. It's a drop in the ocean. An implant is much more reliable, it's much more predictable, and it is definitely permanent. So now we're gonna watch a video by Bernice. My name is Bernice, I'm 31 years old. Um, for the longest time, I wanted a change in my body since I was in my early teens. I just felt like I love myself, I eat healthy, I work out, but I just don't have that shape that I want, that Latin, I'm, I'm, I'm Latin. So I signed to a modeling agency last year and I would go to castings. They're like, you're beautiful. Yeah, you have the measurements and the requirements, but you don't have like a fig, like you're not like a plus size, like curvaceous girl. Am I a good candidate for a butt implant? She's in a modeling agency um, and she's beautiful, but she needs more curves to compete in that arena. So she's someone who would be an ideal candidate not only for buttock implants, but a little bit of sculpting with liposuction by making the waistline more narrow and the butt bigger it like multiplies the outcome. So anytime we're, we're augmenting a body part with a foreign object, an implant, um, patients are always very curious, not only what is it gonna look like, but how is it gonna feel? So after surgery, when you put this implant in there and you add an equal amount of post-operative swelling, uh, the implants always feel very hard uh, for that first couple weeks and maybe even couple months. As the swelling resides and the tissues relax and even stretch a little bit, at six months, they're starting to feel more comfortable to the patient and starting to uh, feel like self. Like patients don't feel like they have a foreign object in their body anymore. It feels like part of them. And then when you take it out to about 12 months, it's gonna feel like you're flexing your muscle 50%. If you can start off before surgery and, and flex your, your glute muscles, maybe 50%, not 100%, that's about how firm it's gonna feel. So it's gonna feel more firm than your, your native butt did but it's not gonna feel like a hard rock in the end. Things to consider when undergoing buttock implants, I think it's a, a very safe operation for, for most patients who are otherwise healthy. The risks of any procedure are different within different surgeons' hands. The infection rate, contrary to what most people think, is actually quite low. I have a 0.5% infection rate with butt implants. The tough part can be the recovery. You know, mini surgery comes with uh, some days or weeks of recovery. You have to plan at least two weeks minimum out of, out of going back to any job unless you can work from home. Uh, I would suggest three weeks is even better, but two weeks minimum. And the main reason for that is sitting is prohibited for those first two weeks after surgery. Um, after you get past those first two weeks, you'll be able to sit down for 10, 15 minutes at a time, and each week thereafter, you can add another 10, 15 minutes to that the time allotment where you're sitting down. And that doesn't mean you can only sit down for 10 or 15 minutes throughout the whole day. That means 10 to 15 minutes at a time, stand up for 30 seconds, and you can sit back down. The good news is you can stand as much as you can tolerate. You can walk around. Uh, you can go out and get some fresh air. Um, just no exercising with the upper body for four weeks and no exercising with the lower body until six weeks. So if you're interested in having a buttock implant procedure, you can find all the information you need on realself.com. Thanks for watching.